Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with a quick video tutorial. And this one is the definitive guide on how to get multiple outputs from contact inside of Ableton Live. Uh, the process inside of contact will be the same for any DAW, but how to get that audio into your uh, audio channels inside of your DAW might be a little bit different. The reason why I'm making this is I've seen a lot of uh, the video tutorials. I've actually done a few and we're just doing it wrong the whole time. And I found the best way to do it. It works each and every time. So I wanna show you right now. Now, before we jump in here, you want to do all of this before you load an instrument. Trust me, you're going to have to close and reopen contact player or contact anyway. So just don't load anything. Step one, you want to see your outputs inside of the contact instrument. To do that, you want to come up here and it's the outputs. If you don't see it, just come up here, click outputs, boom. The next thing you want to do is come in here and hit the plus button, which means plus outputs. And you want to come in how many stereo outputs do you want? I want four, okay? So I wanna bring this up to eight. So now we're going to add outputs by hitting that plus button. And I wanna add four stereo outputs. So that's gonna have eight outputs. Sometimes you need to keep that in mind. Uh, if you look over here, it says contact five, eight out. That means you get four stereo, 16 out, you get 16 stereo or eight mono, 16 mono, great. And this is the, the step that people seem to miss or people get confused. You wanna come in here and select this as the starting point. If you leave it unassigned, you're gonna run into more issues than you need. So click that. We wanna ascending output assignment, make sure that's checked. And then I'm gonna go ahead and delete the first one because I'm just gonna go ahead and restart it from the beginning, okay? Again, it's just easier to do it this way and it's gonna work every time. That's a good thing to do. And you can also save it as your default if you want, but I prefer to do it this way, hit okay. And then come down here and make sure it says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I like to make sure it says that first. And then you come in here and then you save current default for the VST plugin. Okay, so now that we have that saved, we're gonna go ahead and delete the contact instrument. And then we're gonna reload it. And this is very, very important for a number of reasons. So just do it, okay? We open it up and it saved our preset and everything looks good to go. The next thing we need to do in Ableton Live, and I believe it's only in the suite version, but you come into instruments and you have external instruments. I'm gonna load that on a channel and then MIDI 2, I'm gonna go to contact, and then where it says audio from, I'm gonna choose my audio source. So I'm gonna choose stereo 2. And then I'm gonna do it again, choose contact and choose stereo three, and then do it again. And choose contact and choose stereo four. Now, MIDI two is gonna be contact no matter what. If you have more than one instrument inside of contact, this is where you'll choose it. And it's gonna be from uh, the top to the bottom. So your first contact instrument will be number one, your second one will be number two. And this is how, if you're gonna have multiple instruments, you'll get those out. But if you have something like Novo, for example, uh, this actually has three different loops playing at the same time. And if you look right here, we have an output. I can come in here and choose output two, output three, output four, and then press my uh, loop designer key. And if you look in hit side of the player, those are output into the correct stereo channels and those stereo channels are being fed into the correct channels inside of Ableton Live. So now I have full control over each of those inside of Ableton Live. And that's gonna work the same way with any instrument that it can have multiple outputs. Now, what if I have a second instrument? So let's come back in here, in fact. And if I change it to one, it's just gonna load or play outside or to the channel that I have. So I changed the output to one inside of the output controls and now wherever my contact instrument is loaded, whatever channel that is, it will play out of that channel. So let's load up a second instrument right inside of the player. Okay, so now things get a little bit more complicated, but not really. So the deal here is if you look right here, I have output and this is quite easy to change. If I click right here and go to uh, I can change it to any one of these stereo outputs. But the first thing I wanna show you is the MIDI. 
Right now, if I press a key on my keyboard, I'm only getting the audio from the Heaviosity instrument. But if I change this MIDI to one, now I'm pressing that same key and we're getting both instruments to trigger. So this depends on how you want to trigger this. If you want to use the MIDI controller or, or a MIDI clip separate for each one of these, then you'll want to change that to, you know, port two, okay? And let's change the uh, audio out to stereo two. All right, so I'm back to pressing my key and I'm only getting this instrument to play. If I come in here to where stereo two is uh, located and I take my external instrument and instead of contact one, I go to contact two and I arm that channel. Boom, I'm getting that second instrument out of this channel. And if I come and arm this one, I'm getting my contact. So now I can put separate MIDI pieces in here. I can put a MIDI uh, sequence in here, I can put a MIDI sequence in here, and it will trigger those instruments independently, okay? So there you go, hopefully that makes sense now. I've shown you how to get multiple outs from an instrument that allows for multiple outs. I've shown you how to get two different instruments to either be triggered by the same MIDI and go out to separate channels or be triggered by different MIDI and go out to separate channels. And hopefully from there, you'll be able to configure things how you want them to be configured in the future. Uh, essentially, the deal is here and in fact, let me show you. I want to come out of here and let's load up Contact 16. I'm going to load that up. And what I'm going to do is delete these. And this is to show you why you need to close Contact, okay? If I come in here and we do the same steps we had before, and we choose this one, Ascending, great, delete existing channels uh, for new ones, okay. Boom, look, we got what we were looking for, one, three, five, seven, that's perfect. Remember that, come in here, save curve and preset. And this is different when you have the actual contact player. You can see here, I've got VST plugin, VST A out, 16 out. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say, save this as a 16 out, okay? Now, if I load up the external instrument here before I close contact, and let's come into it, come into contact, look at, I don't have the stereos. I have unassigned things. And this is where things get complicated, okay? So this is where a lot of people actually get hung up for the, for the main part, for the most part. But watch what happens if I come into contact and delete it. Delete it. Let's come back into plugins, load it back up. Let's jump back into that external instrument, select contact, and now look, my stereo inputs are here. So that's where people get caught up about audio from, why can't I get the stereo output? You gotta close and reopen contact. And the best way to do it is to save however many outputs you want as the preset. And then if you wanna switch it back to one, I don't know why you would. I mean, even if you're not gonna use these outputs, uh, having them set up and ready to go is a plus. If you're not gonna use them, you don't need to worry about it. Contact is going to function as normal with the main output being that main channel, okay? So uh, hopefully this clears up sort of the mystery of this. Once you wrap your head around the process, it's really easy to do. But as I said before, a lot of videos uh, skip this part where you gotta select it right here. And this is what makes it so easy. You can go in later after you don't do that and like find it and do it and you can get it to work, but it's just frustrating and it's not very straightforward. Just remember to come in here and start it at one, delete everything that was already there and you'll be straight up good to go after you close and open the plugin. Anyway, I hope that helped. I'm Joshua Casper. I'll see you in the next video.